sorry I'm out of breath. Let's talk about getting raw files off of this thing. Hi everyone, welcome to Pal the Tech. For those of you who shoot photos on an iPhone, you're probably aware of Apple's ProRAW format. This is Apple's version of the RAW file, similar to what you'd get out of professional cameras like the Fujifilm X-T4, the Sony a7 IV, and similar. Now this RAW file format version of your photo will contain much more information about your image, and it'll give you more flexibility and more control in editing, particularly when you're editing your exposure, your color, or your white balance. Now, to enable your iPhone to shoot in RAW format, that's fairly easy. Simply go into Settings and scroll down until you see Camera. Once you're there, tap on Formats, Apple Pro RAW. See that right there? Now that you have it enabled, when you go to actually shoot your photo, right? So you tap on the camera icon and you wanna go ahead and take your shot, okay? Right at the top right corner of the app, there's a little RAW. Make sure when you tap that, you remove the slash. Now when you shoot, it'll shoot in RAW. However, this does come at a cost because file sizes for the Apple Pro RAW format are about five times larger than shooting in regular JPEG. However, many photographers are willing to trade that file size cost for the extra flexibility in the editing and having the best possible quality of your image. But here's the problem and why I made this video today. How do you get your RAW files off your phone and on to your Mac. Now the easiest method that I know of is to use AirDrop and I'll assume that you already have AirDrop set up on your devices. If you don't and you want me to make a video on how to do that, please let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to. The problem that people encounter is that they'll find a photo they want to edit in RAW, right? They'll tap on the share icon, they'll tap on AirDrop, They'll choose the MacBook or whatever computer they want to transfer it to. Once it transfers, it appears in the downloads folder on your Mac. The problem is, look, it's a JPEG. And it will be a JPEG even if you tell the phone to shoot RAW. And that's the whole problem. Even if you've got it set up to shoot in RAW, okay, and you go and you try and airdrop the file, the photo, onto your Mac, it's going to airdrop it as a JPEG. So in order to get the actual RAW file, here's what you need to do. Go ahead and browse to one of the photos that you shot in RAW. Tap on the share icon, but before you send it to AirDrop, you need to make a setting change. Tap on options. You see that underneath the photo? Look at that. And where it says include all photos, data, go ahead and turn that on. Now, when you go ahead and you AirDrop that RAW file, it will appear on your Mac as a DNG file. Have a look at this. It actually saves both the JPEG and the DNG file. The one you want, obviously, when you're gonna go to Lightroom or Photoshop or wherever to edit, is the DNG. So using AirDrop is a wonderful, fast, and easy method. If you have a Mac computer and an iPhone, you can quickly transfer between the two. It works great, I use it all the time. However, what about using, say, Dropbox, Google Drive, and so forth? The problem is, it won't work. If, for example, you try and share it to Dropbox, you tap Save to Dropbox, choose a folder, and go ahead and hit Save, what you're gonna get in your Dropbox folder is the JPEG, not the RAW file. See that there? Same thing with Google Drive. But what about using Apple's own Photos app? Will that work? Can you get a RAW file from your Photos app onto your desktop so that you can edit it in other programs? If you open up your Photos app on your Mac, have a look at this, you can see which of your photos are the RAW files. See them right here, it says RAW. If you double click on it, it expands it. There you go, and it says RAW. Fairly easy. So a logical, normal, rational, and simple person would think, right, that to get that raw file out of photos and onto your Mac, you would click on it, hold down the mouse button, and drag it onto your desktop. Watch what happens when we do that. Click, hold, drag, and boom. And look what happens. It changes it to a JPEG. Thanks, Apple. That makes so much sense. I specifically told you I was shooting in RAW. I set everything up that way. I brought the RAW file in here, and I just want to get the file out of photos and start editing it in Photoshop. And you convert it to a JPEG. There is a workaround for this that will work for a number of you. It won't work on this computer for some reason, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway because it will work for enough of you that I think it's important to include it in this video. Here's how you get your RAW file out of photos and onto your desktop. Double click on your RAW photo and go up to where it says edit. You see that right there? 
click on that, and you'll be in the edit screen. Now, obviously you can just go ahead and use this and edit your RAW file. But remember, we wanna get this thing out of photos and onto the desktop and use it in another program like Photoshop, Lightroom, Capture One, etc. So once you've clicked edit, go up to where it says image, and normally it should say use raw as original, okay, <laughs> right? It doesn't say that, it's grayed out. I don't know why it's grayed out. If somebody knows why it's grayed out at this point, please let me know in the comments. So I had to stop right here and go back to the first technique I showed you in the video, which is using AirDrop. Quite honestly, this whole thing is so stupid and convoluted and it's so much more difficult than it needs to be. This is just crazy. And if you have that grayed out option on your own computer and you're, you can't get this thing out of photos, there's one other thing you can try doing. Go into your user folder on the Mac and go into pictures. You see where it says photos library right there? Or it may look like this. Now be very careful with what you do in here. Don't edit anything, don't delete anything, or you may end up making your Apple Photos app not work. But right click it and select show package contents and then go into originals and you'll see a bunch of folders like this. Go ahead and sort them by list. You can sort them by date modified. Go into the topmost one and look for the DNG file. You can even sort them by kind and you'll see the raw file somewhere in here. Hold down the option key as you drag it out of photos and onto your desktop. I don't know, this is so much more difficult than it needs to be. I don't understand why Apple just doesn't have a simple drag and drop the photos from one device to another into a folder. I don't get it. And it's funny because there are so many accessories and devices and little add-ons that you can get for your iPhone to turn it into a professional camera, right? You can pop this on the back right here and then put a professional camera lens right on the phone itself. Heck, you can get a cage and drop it in a cage, hook a mic up and a light, and now you have a regular camera rig. But yet, even with all of these little add-ons to try and make your phone into a more professional camera, the weakest link is still there, and that is it is so difficult to quickly and easily get that RAW file into another program that's not Apple Photos that you use as part of your workflow. However, this will be an ongoing video and one in which I hope will one day no longer be necessary because I hope to see Apple start to improve their software and make it easier and more flexible for those of us that like to shoot in RAW on a smartphone and edit those raw files on our editor of choice on our computers. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching today's Tech Monday, and I really hope this video has been helpful for you, or at least entertaining. And if it has, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I will see you again very soon in a new video. Take care.